G'day and welcome back. Um, do apologise, no video last week. I wasn't feeling real good, so yeah, we give the video a skip. But we're back. A um, couple of weeks ago, Curtis from Cutting Edge Engineering gave me a call and asked if I was interested in making a couple of parts for his SIP Hydroptic Number Six jig borer. Um, the parts are off the end of the ways, I believe. Um, he just, the ones he had he sent down, just in the post, just sent them down, and um, so I could replicate them. Now, they've got a 60 degree taper on the edges and 45 degree taper on the ends. Counterboard holes, um, and you also need some fasteners made too, some bolts. So there's two here. These are M8 by 1.25, just for the round head screwdriver slot, and a little short sucker, uh, M6 by 1, same thing, round head screwdriver slot. Um, I've been looking at these, and I'm thinking the best way to do the angles just is in the shaper. I think that'll be the, the easiest way. Um, just make a fixture, hold it in the vise, and use the... Um, the compound, tilt the compound now over on the shaper and just yeah, run it down manually. So that'll be interesting. Now, a bit of a pre-warning, the shaper I found is hard to film. It's a, to me, it's a pain in the ass. It's a hard machine to film. And the footage is boring in my view. Um, just going backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards. It's sort of, I might try a little bit of time lapse, I don't know. Anyway, I'm just going to make these out of some normal plate. I um, think I've got a piece long enough I can get both out of. So, get into Cincinnati and bring it down to size. And then, yeah, just work my way through it. So, I hope you enjoy. And, um, again, I'm sorry about no video last week. But we're back on track again. Rightio, see you at Cincinnati. Okay, I've flipped the part over, going to take it down to final dimension, which is 975 thou wide, it's about 24.8, take it 100 thou off at a time. Gonna do bear it. There is about half a thou taper, which I don't know where that came from. Could have been a bit of shit under the parallel. Don't know. Half a thou ain't gonna matter on that. I'll go and cut it, deburr this edge, and then cut them to length. I'll get it both out of one piece. As you can see, we're gonna just just long enough to get them both out of the one piece, which is good. It's only half the half the work. Now to come off the length and we'll be right on target. There's our two blanks. Just got to bring in the whites down there. And deck the top off, flip it over, bring it down to height, and then I'll do the holes.
Okay, I've just found the centre of the part. I've worked out the hole offsets for the through hole and counter ball. So I'll get them done on both pieces and then I can make a fixture to fit in the shape of them to mount these two so I can cut the angles. I made a bit of a stuff up in the way I was going to build these. The top, I was going to have a um, shear tool on the shaper finish. But I've realised I can't do that. I can't take the top off. Because I got, these are going to go into a fixture. Do the angles. So it's, it's either do two setups in the shaper, or just why this is all set up now. Deck it off the height, and be done with it. So... That's what I decided to do. Why it's all set up here in the mill. I just um, knocked the top off down to height. And the can of bores are at the right depth. I've already worked that out before. I was thinking about doing it a different way. But um, it's got to take 2.35 off the top of this. So what I've done here is I've got a piece of one inch square and built a jig out of it basically that can pick up on both plates which this will then go in the shaper and be able to hold this in the shaper while I put the chamfers on them. I'm trying out this Hangstifers Super All Tap. Um, just hand tapping these M6. I've done one and yeah no dramas but um this is just i don't know what type even type of steel it is it was just a piece of scrap square stock i had laying around but um this stuff here doesn't contaminate your coolant so compatible with most coolants which is good uh, it's good for aluminium chrome nickel stainless and titanium so it's nice and thick too it doesn't actually doesn't come off the bloody doesn't fall off the, the tap. Oh, she's thick shit. Tacky. Stays on there. So, it's worth giving it a go. Feels smooth. This tap's done a, well, a fair bit of work, this tap. I, was, I say it's not the sharpest one in the shed. I picked that up from Live Tools, so give it a go. So the way this is going to work is simply bolt it down. And I can mount that block in the shaper and do the 60 degree tapers and do the 45s on the ends. Hold it nice and rigid, all the bolts are in line. I can't see why it won't work. Okay, after a little bit of fiddle arse and round setting up, I got the fixture in the vice, vice is all trammed in, but then I had to tram the actual part in on the bolts, um, because there's obviously movement in the bolt holes. So it's all trammed in 100% true to the ram. Indicator set up just so I roughly know how much I've indicated over. Um, Set the compound to 60 degrees. Oh, well, you can read that there. It's spot on 60 degrees. It's the easiest way to do it instead of trying to set it up on the mill. 
this is what the shape is good for. Always something in there. Not overly impressed with that finish. I'm gonna have a bit of a stuff around with that. Okay, I've ground up another tool which I'm getting a much better finish. It's not gonna be like a ground finish. In all honesty, I don't think I'm going to get it any better finish than that with this machine. I'm not overly impressed with it, but I think it's going to have to do. Sadly, like I might be a light bit of rub with a bit of emery, might pretty it up a bit, but I can see a little ripple in it. Now I've adjusted the gibbs. That's why I sort of missed out on a few of the few of the runs because I've been playing around with the gibbs and yeah, adjusting it all up and I can't get it any better so it is what it is That's one side done, I'll get it turned around and indicator back in and then um, cut the other side. Well, I've spun the part around, indicated it back in, gave the grind, uh, a tool another grind and a hone. So, see if we can destroy this one. This is just bringing out a Kit Kat. How good is that? Honestly, I am a little bit disappointed in that finish. Um, I'm wishing I had spent the time and built another fixture so this was actually flat and I could have used a shear tool, but I think I can save it with a bit of Fetlands and memory and clean it up. But it is what it is. So I'm going to take this one out and put the short one in and do this 260 degrees on them once. all the 60 degree sides done so as you can see I've turned the vice around um, I've already chamfered off this end over here at 45 degrees about to do this one it's exactly the same principle just that it's 45 degrees so I don't think I'll bother showing too much of this um, basically just cut it back till I touch down the bottom here then I'm gonna have to modify this fixture to hold the shorter one on so I can, um, because of the radius on the tool, it's going to, going to have to take away a bit of the fixture. Anyway, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. It 
that's that edge done. This piece is now complete, all bar I've just got to blend these round these corners off like the original one, which I'll just do with a file. Um, I can fit the other one up now and get it finished and out of the way. So, well, there we have it. That 45 is done on both ends. Um, if you can see, I just that's where I was saying before, I had to modify this fixture, just put a relief in there for when the cutter, the radius of the cutter come down, I could get right to the bottom corner. So, that worked out quite well. As far as I'm concerned, a little bit of hand work. These are complete and I can get on to making the, the um, six bolts. Okay, the next part of this job for cutting edge engineer is to make a couple of bolts. I'm going to make six bolts in total to this size, uh, which are M8, uh, to this length and two shorter ones, and two six mil ones that are real short. So I'm making them out of stainless because they're not going to rust in the machine. I think once they go in, they're not coming back out again. Um, got tail stock support in for the longer ones because I'm going to turn the shanks down. And then I can remove the, cut the sander out. we cut the end off the end with, it's got the sander in it. Hold it in a collet and then I can single point thread them. For starters, we'll just machine this, um, the shank down to eight mil. finished but it's bloody hot. No taper in it which is good. Right now I've got 17th hour left on this diameter to come off. I've slowed the, uh, sorry 17th hour depth of cut so 34th hour. I've slowed the feed rate down. There's no taper in it. I'm pretty happy about that. Got this on dimension, 313th hour. I am going to move it out in the collet a little bit just to turn the head, part it off, and then I can put it in another collet, holding it with the shank, and then turn the tit off the end where the center is and single point thread it. So the head was shooting for 511th hour diameter. Half a thou under. There we go. That's bloody hot too. So I just gotta spin that around and turn that center out of it and clean the end up, bring it to dimension widthwise. Thread it.
Okay, we're set up to do the 8x1.25 thread. Change gears have been changed over, and this is the first time I've cut a 1.25 thread of this lathe. So, it'll be interesting. Leave the half nuts engaged, and just backwards and forwards. Try a time lapse on this thread and see what happens. See how it looks. I just tried a bit of time lapse video there. I'm not too sure how it turned out, but something different anyway. So it's just wanting to start. Well, that thread turned out quite nice. Pretty happy with that. Just had to be careful of the deflection, so there's plenty of light cuts. And um, yeah, quite a few spring passes too that I probably didn't show, but I did try the time lapse, which worked quite well, I hope. Anyway, um, I'm going to thread the others off camera, and then we'll go over to the Cincinnati and put the slot in the head. Okay, we're set up to do this slot. The screwdriver slot in the end of these bolts. Um, Slit and saws a sixteenth wide, touched off on top, just with a blue marker on the top. Come down to just start attaching the blue marker, worked out the offsets, drop the table down. It's right on centre. I've just put about a five thousand mark across there to double check myself. But everything seems to be right to go. Build on the go. across the top, there's no real burr there, it's actually come up pretty darn good. That's that mission done and dusted. Um, overall I'm happy the way they turned out. Um, I know the video is pretty ordinary this week but it's the way it is. The Shaper I still find is one of the hardest machines to film. It's a pain in the ass. So I'll get these packaged up today, these can be sent up to Curtis they can go back in the jig borer if I can get some photos of them um, in place on the um, hydroptic jig borer I'll put them in probably next week's video I'd say anyway I hope you enjoyed that video that was something a bit different it's good to use a shaper again too it was quite enjoyable would have done a few things a bit different too with fixtures and so on but anyway next time we know righto guys See you later.